Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Yati Allah, Ti Ya Rasul, Ulul Amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and Abdukul Ajisu, Da'ifu, Miskinu, Zalimu, Jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And in this month of Safar, the month of entering into the cave of realities and that that cave is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And that with ishq and love and with praisings and good actions our way is based on making a correct intention and deeds. Deeds that get the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad And that dawah, those actions, that tahzeem, that celebration of love is what's important and what should be inspired to people. So that the shaykhs come along into our life, they teach us the reality and then they teach us to spread that reality. And that reality is not a earthly knowledge where 99.9% .9 of videos you watch, it's a hatta dunya if you understand its analogy. The earth talks about earthly matters, knowledge that resides upon the earth are earthly. They could even be about the heavens but from the perspective of someone on earth like a gazing there, oh wow, they can talk about certain things. Each like a ship, Allah describes these planets are like ships, a fuluq, they're moving in an orbit. The maqam, maqam al-fardani the maqam of the moon is a ship. Those upon that ship they, te they teach and talk from its reality. And that course is not the same course of the ship of the earth. The ship of the earth is on its own course. It talks from the view and the horizon of that ship. You're on this ship, it only talks from the mountains and the view that it sees. So that uloom is something different. That's why people say, we don't hear this before. The uloom and the knowledge that from the qamar, that we're singing qamarun, qamarun because they've been dressed by that reality, that knowledge is about the course that that qamar is on. Twelve courses, twelve hijabs, its job to safeguard the earth but its only focus is on the sun, its only focus. You can throw as many rocks as you want and be as loud a dog barking at it as you want, it doesn't care. Its only focus is the shams and that's why this is called shams al-arifin. These are the arifin that Allah granted them the highest realities of eternal light, star realities, not earthly planet realities. The shams is a symbol of eternity, a symbol of Allah's malakut because it has no mass. It released and gave away its mass. It's an ethereal gaseous reality that has no mass, just pure energy and it produces an energy and it produces a reality that is solely sustained by Allah mm. As a result it's eternal. This qamar it only focuses on that reality and takes every type of difficulty. Every type of barrage of rock throwing that is the symbol of the qamar, that it's not distracted. So means this 
and those knowledges are different. So means that when they teach about Muharram from that perspective not from the earth. Everything that Sayyidina Muhammad walked and did it had a much deeper reality. That's why Allah wa ma arsalnaka rahmatan lil alameen we wouldn't have sent this reality, it didn't need to become but I only created earth for that reality to arrive. So that it completes its knowledges and its reality upon the earth. The arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad completes the reality of what Allah had created the earth for. So when Prophet is moving in Muharram from the state of dunya into the state of Malakut which is Medina to Munawwara, he's teaching for us. These Qamarun knowledges is more than if you pay for a $12,000 package for Hajj and they take you on a bus and you're so happy to pay that and they take you on bus and show you around, see this is where Prophet was walking, this was this, this is that's nice. But Prophet is teaching the eternal re reality of that. There's a, a reality that never leaves and based on all eternity that Allah gave a grant to these inhabitants of earth to achieve that. That when I walked from Mecca and struggled 13 years against myself as an example for us that we struggle against ourselves and Allah going to open now the heavenly kingdom. And when He wants to open the heavenly kingdom for Maqam al Mahmud the Muhammadan reality of what Allah want to grant, they must stop at the cave. Their souls must stop at the cave and that cave is a symbol of the kingdom you're about to enter. That the only way into Medina was through the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad so we never left that reality. As soon as they taught it, they're teaching you, you never left that reality. You must have an atom that exists within that cave. If you're hearing this now or at any time that you hear this reality, you must have a reality in that cave. And to be dressed and blessed by that reality the presence and the fana of Sayyidina Muhammad resting in his qalb and they were asking to enter into that reality, to be dressed by that reality. <coughs> and the only protection for the purified heart is that you must be accompanying the foot of a great Siddiq. And Naqshbandiyyatul Aliyah has the both of these great Siddiqs guarding this reality. One whom lied in the bed for the hijrah to begin, Imam Ali salam, the teaching us that after our companion Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq al-Mutlaq completes this reality upon you, we will give you our family dress when you entered into the city. But first you'll go that way to understand the Siddiqiyya reality that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq wants to dress upon. Teaches us then character of truthfulness with your deed and with your actions. Not that people just say they're truthful, they haven't been through anything, they haven't been through any testing. But through their deed and actions and everything that they do to establish that love and that reality they accompany Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And if we have that love and we are accompanying with that character Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq says, then you're on my feet, you're my qadam, you're my muqaddam, you're copying my character. Did you give everything for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad with your heart and with your soul? You don't have to empty your bank account, you have to empty your heart. Take out of your heart your family, 
Take out of your heart your children, take out of your heart your job, take out of your heart your goals, your insurance and all your cash and everything that holds too much space in your heart. You're studying your classes, you pray more for your studying than for your reality. Take it out of your heart, it's a dunya, it's a big dunya, it's a matter of like emailing all the time, pray for my Lamborghini shaykh, I need gas. Pray, please pray shaykh, every day, pray for my Lamborghini shaykh. Why would you pray for your Lamborghini? Everything that occupies the heart, take it out and put it in Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad Say, Ya Rabbi I want to empty my heart of everything other than Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad If we follow their teaching, follow their example, follow their way, you feel that your heart fills with the love, that your focus and primary in your life is that reality. And everyone else and everything else has its place. Because at some point in your life you're going to become disappointed. If you put them in your heart, they became your Rabb and your Rabb will crush you when they do something wrong. There's no shaykh in there either, it's Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad A love that never disappointing, love that is supreme. And the best of example, when we have that love that's the inheritance from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Means I gave away everything, means I put it out of my heart. They were the wealthiest in Medina, didn't mean they became poor. But I put it all away and the only focus for my heart was how to serve Sayyidina Muhammad That was Muharram, that was the opening. So we're clarifying how to find this cave, how to find this cave. It's the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad With this love, with these actions, with this khidmat, with this service, with everything that people are trying to do, they're now going into their heart, they meditate at the first level of meditation you find what you really love because your meditation will be all about what's in your heart. Some people seeing too many haram images when they close their eyes, uh oh you have to empty that out of your heart, take these out, take these out. Too many thoughts that when they want to sit and meditate like, oh I got to pay the bills, I got to check my account, there's a stock that's going up, well I wonder if I'm going to get the promotion, those are again idols within the heart. That's why the tafakkur and muhasaba and accounting will reveal to the servant what's in their heart. So this is not a lecture about emptying your bank account and sending everything to a shaykh. This is about emptying your heart, making a meditation and a, and a continuous daily accounting of what's in my heart. Why when I close my eyes I just can't forget about everything. Everything just leaves my thought as if I'm dead and I'm so happy to be dead and I'm just thinking of Prophet I'm thinking of how am I going to enter Medina, how when I take my last breath will Prophet be there to greet me that you did good my son, I'm happy you tried your best on this earth, you spread my name everywhere with your love. Are we thinking like that? That's what they're asking, think like that. Empty the heart of everything but that love. Safar comes and Allah want to dress us with milad, <coughs> want to dress us with milad and Nabi The birth of that light is going to be coming in the cave, that's why they want your soul in that cave. Because what's coming after Safar? Rabbul Awwal where the light is born. There's no time for Allah So a light inside your being and your essence is lit by the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad You're in existence from where? 
For you to be lit and to light up you take your imitated light and you're asking Allah light me up Ya Rabbi with my eternal reality. We say, your eternal reality you don't know it yet. So they come into our lives and say, no your eternal reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah Did you go in the heart, empty it, sit there begin to praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad to make Allah happy. The praising and salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad is the highest zikr of Allah because Allah in Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi So you want to do the highest zikr of Allah is durood sharif. You filled your heart with this durood sharif and then asking, Ya Rabbi now through safar and the reality of safar what happens then in Rabbi al-Awwal? That light will be born, boom a spark Allah will grant into your wujud, into your essence. The spark of all realities to be born every year Rabbi al-Awwa the light of Sayyidina Muhammad is born in the heart of those whom are ashaqeen. That's why these salawats and these nats, you're the light of my essence that it sparked and it opened. That's why safar is a month of haybah, well as a wounded for all of humanity. Run from what they're worshipping, their belief is incorrect. Who? Everyone. If it's not the love of Muhammadun Rasulullah they didn't find Allah's hidden treasure. I was a hidden treasure wanting to be known. You thought you found La ilaha illallah but Allah say, no I'm hidden. And the only way you can find me is if you found my treasure, if you found really the, the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah you found Allah Allah's secret is manifesting, Allah's rahmah is manifesting, Allah Azim is praising Himself, you have a magnificent character. <coughs> Why Allah would to say that? Because it's Allah's reality. Of course he's going to praise himself, he's not going to praise anyone in creation. But you have a, a magnificent character. All those realities they want to be dressed and blessed by that. Safar then is a month of haybah where Allah says, run from everything that they worship in your life, find that cave. And those qamarun who will teach you about that reality and enter and run into the cave. Run from them to Allah As soon as they run into the cave that Allah will send His rahmah and make them to be rushed, to ripen them. Ayat al-Kareem, 18th surah, Surah al-Kahf, 16th verse, run to the cave so that Allah can send His rahmah upon you. Next verse Allah described the sun and that when you entered into the cave how the sun is moving from east and west, east and west, Rabbul Mashariq wa Maqarib. And the dress and the reality of the shams Allah is addressing now that you're in the cave, Allah keep talking about the sun's movement and how these Ashab al-Kaf they're completely in submission and they're not being burned and killed by a sun. Can you imagine just lying out onto the, the desert, the sun would come right over you and cook you, there's no way you could live 309 years. But Allah give reference to the sun because of this reality, that this sun of reality is very important with that cave, it's the secret of that cave. And in that Ayatul Kareem Allah says, there's no guidance except by Allah 
And those whom guided, guided, if not guided there is no way to achieve the guidance and Allah uses the word. In the 17th verse of Surat Al-Kahf Allah declaring, there's no guidance except by Allah Whom Allah guides is guided and whom Allah doesn't guide he has no waliyun murshidun. So Surat Al-Kahf is a, is a dalil against every bad madhab. When they say, nobody can protect you, no Allah said, no as a matter of fact that if I guide you, you're guided and if you're not guided I will not assign a wali and who's a murshid, one whom will guide you and protect you by whatever means Allah wants. So means the beginning of Safa is entering into that cave to be dressed by that reality, to be dressed by the rahmah and the mercy of what Allah wants and that Allah says, if you're following and entering into the cave know that there's a waliun murshidun that is guiding you, that this is a guided cave, this is not a perchance that you found it. This is something very dedicated and very guided, if you hear it you're under their guidance. Allah in Holy Qur'an is describing, all of Surat Al-Kahf is the adab of how to accompany these rijal because this is the part of the cave but next week we'll be talking about Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr Now the adab of the people of the cave, how to be dressed by this reality and that Allah assigned for us a protecting wali. And then when Allah assigned the protecting wali, you are now a guided person. And if Allah doesn't assign, He then gives the default that you are no guidance. There is no guidance except by command of Allah and if He guides you, He sends you to a wali and who's a murshid. In that cave are Ashab al-Kahf, seven and one. In that cave are seven realities of eternity, each holds a reality for the seven attributes of the Divinely Face, for Wajik al kareem Their whole being is to reach to the reality of that face. These seven who was sleeping in there represent the seven eternal essences of the Divine Face. The seven representatives of Sayyidina Muhammad who are eternally representing that reality. There are seven diamonds upon this earth that have the face of Sayyidina Jibreel and these seven each one of them assigned to one of those diamonds and they, the ruhaniyat is attached to that diamond continuously looking at that to receive Allah's qudra and power. Means immense realities upon this dunya, Allah just didn't create it and left it for people to do what they want to do. The seven and their reality has a representation of Ashab al-Kahf on earth but the Muhammadan Ashab al-Kahf, not the placeholders from before the nation because the reality what Allah is showing is the reality has always been. So before the arrival of Prophet there had to have been a story of that. Those seven are the imitated. The seven real ones are the representatives of Sayyidina Muhammad as in the twelve tribes of Bani Israel. Those twelve tribes are imitated tribes, the twelve Imams of the nation are the real. Those are the real rivers and fountains flowing from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So everything of the Muhammadan haqqaiq is the highest haqqaiq. It's the one that is complete haqq and truth, all the other were imitations of that reality. So then Allah give to us that now come to this cave, 
reach to the reality of the cave. Do you understand the teachings of these Ashab al-Kahf? That these Ashab al-Kahf of the Muhammadiyoon reality, they take from this reality their souls each represent one of these attributes of the Divine Face. And that Divine Face is eternally emanating and all they want in life is to reach the Divine Face. Ya Rabbi they don't care for dunya and they don't ask for akhirah but they're asking for that which never perishes, wajik al kareem. At the end of our fajr prayer we always say after Surah Al Yaseen, Everything will go except the holy face of what Allah wants to give. Allah doesn't have a face looking at us. Allah has seven attributes that dress the Muhammadan face and these attributes each are dressing anyone whom looks at that face been dressed by these seven eternal attributes. That's all that they want. Their life is to reach towards that reality. So then our whole life was that we want to be in that cave, we want to have the reality of that cave, we want to be dressed by that cave. Then Allah gives in Surat Al-Kahf an opportunity. Do you see how important these Ashab Al-Kahf are? Seek them out in your life and then if you should find them be like Qitmir. Sallallahu gives for us that you don't have to think you're Ashab al-Kahf. Oh, how am I going to be Ashab al-Kahf? If I'm not going to be Ashab al-Kahf then forget it I'm not going to go. Allah said, no do you remember the story of Ashab al-Kahf? There was a dog and it's not a dog because for Prophet it's a lion. These are the great lions of all reality and when this creature is following them and they're saying, no need for you go because if anyone sees you, you'll give us away and start throwing rocks. And start throwing rocks means our life is then about testing. We're going to have rocks thrown at us, we're going to have testing and difficulty in our way. Everything that we thought and we planned for in life it becomes something different. Every day is some sort of a test and a rock that comes towards us in every aspect of our life. Then Allah said, don't give up, keep going, keep going, keep going until the creature got a tongue. It got up and spoke and it spoke to them and he never bit them and he never attacked them took a tremendous abuse from them. But Allah gave a tongue and said that, I'm not stopping. No matter what you do I'm not stopping my path. That perchance you may find a benefit of why Allah is sending me. And then Allah describes the benefit that while they were doing their work for Allah when they're lying in fana for Allah Qitmir guarded the cave. And as a result of guarding the cave Allah had dressed upon this creature a hayba, a creature that in their time they called the dog something najas, something that not clean. Allah said, I can make anything not clean to be clean and worthy of paradise. Don't think you're low, don't think you're bad, don't think you're not going to make it. Allah said, I can make anything from low to be high and I can make anything high to be low. I can grant whatever mercy I want and that for us was immense ni'mat, immense ni'mat that Allah forgive all sins, doesn't look to the form. But says that based on your character, so what was the character to accompany the reality of the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad Take the rocks. If you use your position to fight and to attack people you're worse, you're not even a dog because the example of the dog 
was it stayed quiet. It could have ate the Ashab al Kaf. If you throw a rocket enough at a big dog, can you imagine a big one? He'll eat you. Not only he didn't eat and he didn't attack, never became angry, but was calm and peaceful, peaceful. And that's why they have to prod us in life, they have to keep poking us in life because they don't want to be end up in a room with a lunatic. Would you want to be locked up in a room for 40 days if somebody's going to gonna pull out a knife and kill you in the middle? No. They don't want to end up in eternity with you. <laughs> so they prod you and prod you and see what you're made of. You're wild, you're vicious, then they may all, let's send that one somewhere else. Maybe there's somebody who likes the vicious ones. So they prod you and prod you until they see good character. And that's all that this cave is asking for. The Prophet made it so easy to enter this reality, have khuluqul azim, have a good character. So then tariqahs are trying to bring people to this reality and teach them have good character. As much as you're prodded, as much as you're tested, keep your akhlaq and your adab to be good. With that good character Allah is dressing you until one day you can speak that your, your tongue will show something miraculous. That because of the patience of this creature it began to speak to them, dogs don't speak. It spoke to them and showed them something miraculous that this is not something normal. And so Allah give to us, don't worry. You be patient and you be good with good character, something miraculous will be about you. Because Allah dresses no one else, Allah has to be happy, no one else. Allah is the one whom rewards and, and gives from His bounty. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the realities of the holy month of Safar, to be dressed by it, to be blessed by it and to see all of its lights, to be protected of any type of difficulty for the love and the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.